So, uh, energy looks like momentum. Momentum was mv. Energy is one half mv square. Other than that, silly one half out, out front, they look very, very similar. And that v square is all of the difference in the world. Hmm. And you'll have a different number, and it will end up having a different consequences. Huh. You'll think about energy differently than momentum. One of the immediate things to notice is that there is no direction associated with energy. If you're moving forward, your momentum is forward, but your energy is just a pure number, one half mass times velocity squared. So, uh, you, you might be familiar with one of the immediate physical consequences of this. Uh, many years ago, uh, the United States federal government decided to lower the speed limit on the interesting, uh, interstate highways hmm. from, from 75 to 55. And uh, there were a couple of reasons for that. And uh, the people, um, there is a couple of uh, reasons, and one of them. One of it is that the people noticed that one of the immediate immediate consequences of that reduction in the speed was a change in the pattern of the highway accident fatalities. Oh. So, uh, what's the reason for that? If you go from 75 to 55, it doesn't seem like that bigger differences. It's a small differences in the speed, but uh, after class today, take a calculator and square the and square 55, write it down, write it down, and um, but uh, um, and the square 75, write it down. Look at those two numbers, and you'll find out the the um the 75 square is nearly double 55 squared. So the kinetic energy of the car going 75 is nearly double the kinetic energy of the car going 55. That's the available energy to do work and the work can be manifest in force acting over distance like a force crushing a car over the size of the car or the force damaging our human body, breaking bones. Having a twice as much energy available means you can do twice as much damage and it, so this small change in the speed had a big impact. Uh. The reason why they switched from 75 to 55 inter interestingly enough was not to s save the, uh, lives but, uh, but to save gasoline. Wow, really? This was uh, during the first American energy crisis, and um, and um, think about the logic in, in reverse. If you start with a car at rest, it has no velocity and no kinetic energy, no energy of motion. Now you push down on the gas pedal, and you are taking energy from somewhere else, from the gas ring, and turning into it to the energy of the motion. To go from 0 to 55 miles an hour requires a certain amount of energy. You need at least you need at least that much for 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 one half one half mv square. You might need more because you might be wasting some energy doing work on the on the air on the air with friction and the, and air resistance. Oh. And so on. And at at the very minimum you must have one one half mv, mv square it's worth of the energy and so um so so going from zero to 55 55 requires half the energy of the going from zero to uh, 75 oh and so you use a half as much a, a gasoline to just speed that car up to that highway speed that was why the, the the way change the speed limit was changed, and uh, and it was really about energy and energy cons conservancy. Uh, let's talk about the the other ways to store energy because kinetic energy is not the only one. It's not the only one. So take an object like a like a like a your keys and toss them up into the air. First of all, let's think about the processes in terms of the energy. You are applying the large upward force for a brief time and. Um, 
and your hand is moving upwards. During that period of time, your hand has your hand is pushing on the keys and the keys keys are responding. They are going up and uh, you, you you apply the forces and multiply it by that small distance that your hand moves. Hmm. You did uh you did force times distance. You did work on the keys and uh, and uh, if you do work on something, you are transfer energy to it. So the energy came out of you, and now it's the uh, now it's in the key, and the key have the energy. It, it it's a kinetic energy, one half square, a uh, one half mv square, and uh, they are moving upwards, but they have a certain amount of energy. They going up, going up, going up and up, 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 and they come, uh, they come to the hold. At the top of their, uh, at, at, the, at the top of their arc, if you if you throw them straight straight up, uh, they are they are instantaneously at rest. At rest, yeah. Where did the energy go? They had a kinetic energy, and now it looks like uh, as if as if they they have nothing. But you know, however, that that they do, do they do have energy because energy is just ab ability to do work and. Uh, and those keys up in the air have a real ability to do work. If you if you let them go, they are going to fall back back down again. They could strike a nail. Uh, they could strike a nail and they it, it they, uh, and drive it into the piece piece of the wood. Yeah, they could strike another object and apply force and move it to the uh, to a distance. Those keys do have energy up there. But it's no longer kinetic energy. It's not energy of motion. We need a new name, and I don't like, really like the name. But it's what physicists call it. It's a it's a potential energy, and uh, and uh, to be to to be technical, it's a gravitational potential energy. Because uh, their energy, the energy is there because the keys are up with respect to the planet Earth. Planet Earth is what. Planet Earth is what spring. Planet Earth is what spring them, and uh, is absolutely essential. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. If I if Earth wasn't there, they wouldn't just hover, and uh, and so it's really gravitational potential energy that we are thinking about now, and uh, all of it is there. So the kinetic energy that you are started with the formula one half. MV square tells you how much energy you had you had to begin with. As they go up and up and up, they are uh, converting energy. They are converting energy. Um, they are converting energy from one form kinetic to a new form, um, gravitational potential energy. So and uh, it's the same amount. So you could measure how much energy something has and. Uh, and uh, and uh, and again, it's it's a little bit problem with F equal M A to figure out how high up an object would go if it starts off with some initial given kinetic energy. Mm. Okay, so uh, and the answer is gravitational potential energy depends on how high you are and how massive you are, and that's. That's it, and uh, it's directly proportional to your mass, and directly proportional to high, high, how high you are. If you lift a bowling up, bowling ball up a meter, you are going to have a lot of more gravitational potential energy than than if you lift your keys up by by that the same distance. And if you move those bowling ball up into the attic, they are going to have uh, even more gravitational potential energy. Wow. So they are gonna have a ability to do more work if you let them fall again. There are many different kinds of energy. So we now have listed it, the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential gravitational potential energy. If you take a spring and squeeze it, you are doing work because you are applying a force to squeeze it and you are moving moving the object object you are squeezing it over a distance so you've done some work on the spring that means you've transferred some energy into the spring but where did it go the the the, the spring is not moving you could latch it and just leave it is 
leave it sitting there. Ah, there, that would be like a little child's toy that's been wind up, and you you did some work on the child's toy. There is probably a spring inside that you are compressing, and and uh, and now it's sitting there. It has energy, and uh, the formula is not gonna be one half mv square because that's not because 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 that's. Uh, because that's for energy of motion, it's not going to be the formula for gravitational potential energy. Okay. Um, there is yet another form for spring potential energy, and um, and uh, and uh, so many many different systems have potential energy associated with them. A can a can of a gasoline has energy in it, in it, and. Uh, how much does it have? Well, it depends on the, the microscopic, microscopic chemical bonding of the gasoline molecules. Mm. You could, in the rather simple, uh, you, you could, in the rather simple way, uh, think about those molecules as little springs. Wow, wow! Let me. You could, in the rather simple way, think about those molecules as little springs. Wow, Sabi, and. Uh, and they are all coiled up, ready to be released and do some physical, mechanical work. They could convert that energy into another form by pushing on their piston, boiling some water, or doing any of a number of things where you you'd be converting the, the stored chemical potential energy for the gasoline in some other form. Oh, wow. I'm excited. I'm excited. Molecule is like a spring. Molecule is like a has a stored spring force. Wow. Um, if you have a hot water, it it has some energy stored in the in, in it, and we call it internal energy. Wow. And the the the, the hotter the water, the more thermal energy it has. Wow. So if you have not, if you have hot water, it has some energy stored in it, and we call it thermal energy. We call it thermal energy. And the hotter the water, the more thermal en energy it has. How is that stored? Well, if you think about it microscopically, there are molecules of water, and they are jiggling. Jiggling means motion. Uh, each little molecule has its own little one half mv square. Wow, there are a bunch of little numbers that all add up to the one big number. The water has some total amount of energy. Now you don't want to call it kinetic energy, even though microscopically it re it really is energy of motion, because 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 the the water pot is just sitting there. You don't see the motion with your eyes, so we give it this different name. Ah, so. We'll come back to the uh, we we we'll come back to the thermal energy and uh, and uh, because thermal energy is pretty subtle and uh, well and uh, well we want to de devote some lectures later on the on the on the to the thermal energy all by itself. Mm. Energy flows and uh, as you do work, that is that is. Work that is really the transfer for energy from one object to another. Energy can flow from one body, from a body to another body, like uh, when I push on my keys or when I hit the golf club. If if uh, it can also change from from form to form. A single body can have uh, energy, and uh, then transfer that energy. For instance, from uh, from the upward kinetic energy of the key to the later gravitational potential energy and they later back into the kinetic energy again so energy can flow it can flow from body to body it can flow it can flow from form to form but here is a big idea here's a big idea the central and most critical idea of energy is uh, energy is conserved wow conserved total energy is conserved so what I start with may transfer but um, what what I start with may transfer 
but the amount or the number measured in a joule is 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 going to always be constant. Now I I should be I I should little I should be a little bit careful uh, uh because because if if I have an isolated system um uh, and things are going on inside of it and it has a total amount of energy and the energy might flow from one part to another part part or 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 from one uh from one form to another form if I keep track through though. Uh, that the total will be the same. The total will be the same. If the bo if the body is not isolated, however, there are external forces acting on it, and then you might be able to do some work on it and add some energy to it. Once again, uh, it's just like a momentum in that uh, in that when you when you are thinking about the conservation, you can always step back, look at the larger system, think about the flow, think about the flow. Hmm. And um, think about the flow and uh, recognize that, that in the gra grand scheme of their things, energy is always conserved. It is very, very usual idea, useful idea. The bio biologist who is looking at a cell will probably most of the time not thinking about uh, pushes and pulls on the DNA molecule and, uh, and, um, and the mitochondria. Yeah. But instead, they think about the flow of energy. Instead, they think about the flow of energy. Yeah. The cells, the cell eats some fuel, gains some sugar. It has some stored chemical potential energy, which is converted into the some other form. Maybe some motion of the cell itself. Yes, yes, yes. If you are thinking about the flow of the energy, you can always boil it back down to the forces. Energy can be thought of in terms of Newton's law, but you don't have to, which is which is lovely things about energy. Instead, there is a little number that is moving around. Moving around. Uh, it, it's as if I have some money in, a, in my pocket. I know how much it is, and I can transfer it to you, and now you have uh, that money. Wow! And uh, we can keep track. It, it's like a bookkeeping tool, and we can have a uh, obviously complex interactions. Uh, yet there is a uh, the yet yeah, yet there is this anchor, just as momentum was an anchor. So it, so is energy in energy conservation. So if you are a power station, um, sorry, if you are a power station engineer, mm, and uh, and you are desiring the system and thinking about the system. Uh, you could think about forces. You're you're running a steam turbine. You're pushing on the mechanical devices, and uh, ultimately you're pushing the electrons into the people in the people's houses. That that's a legitimate way of thinking. And um, and um, <clears throat> and uh, you you might think that way, but uh, the power station engineer is probably thinking about energy by knowing how much energy is being purchased in the form of the core. Wow. Wow. There is a certain stored of chemical potential energy that comes into the plant, and that is how much energy there is to work with, and the energy can be converted into the mechanical or kinetic energy of the turbine turning. That is a motion, of course. That is a motion, of course. Some, some, um, some of the it might be thrown away, but it's it's not really thrown away. Mm. It's just converted into a form that is that is less useful to us, like that, like heat and um, and um, and uh, uh, then the the energy might be converted into yet another form that we haven't talked about it, electrical energy that goes through the, the wires to your house, it might be converted in your house into various other forms. Um, in, in the toaster oven, it could turn into the thermal energy and in, in, the, in the light bulb, it into the energy of the electromagnetic radiation or visible light. Wow. Wow. So this flow of energy is a, is a lovely way of thinking about processes, especially complex processes. I have seen scams. 
I have seen scams on the internet where people try to sell devices called free energy mechanics. <laughs> I know that, I know that. It's a scam, yeah. Yeah. And they are truly scams. Don't waste your money because a free energy machine would be a device that is, that is, for instance, you can, you, you can, you can plug your toaster oven into, into and run it, but you don't have to add any fuel to the device. That, uh, that's clearly biorates con conservation energy. That's clearly biorates conservation of the energy. You are taking energy out. And, but, but you are not putting any energy in. Now I, I suppose there could be a coiled up spring in there. And, but, uh, but that means, but that means that it would run dry at a certain point and uh, it wouldn't be uh, all that useful. You can, you can buy a battery and it has uh, some stored energy in it. In it. Mm. But again, uh, that's not free energy. And uh, you put it in the, the first place. I would argue that the conservation of the energy is the best tested law of physics of any I can think of. There is no better experimental verified law than the law of the conservation of energy. I've already apologized that uh, Newton's law isn't exactly correct. Einstein and special relativity have taught us that, uh, that it's not exactly correct in all circumstances. Einstein's general theory of relativity says that the, 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 the theory of gravity is not exactly as I've stated. Uh, th these are excellent appro approximation. They work very well in the ordinary world. But, but energy is a different story. There are no modern physics corrections or asterisks. Energy conservation is still maintained today as one of the key essential, key, key essential idea uh, of, of our understanding of the, this world. world. We really shifted in about 100 year period after Isaac Newton's. We were thinking about forces and we still do. It's very, very useful in engineering and everyday life applications to think about force and momentum. Mm. But, uh, but when you get to this idea of energy, all of a sudden, just about every situation where you could have used principle of the forces and momentum, now you can think about energy. Let me give you a, one quick example. Uh, think about roller coaster. Think about roller coaster. It started at the top, top of the hill, and you would like to know how fast it's going at the bottom of the hill because you don't want to pe you don't want people flying out. Or, or or being hurt, sure. So how do you do this calculation using Newton's laws? F equal ma. In principle, you figure out you you figure out the force of the gravity and the force of the track, and um, and uh, and uh, you have to think about how that uh, how that evolves over time. Mm. You would need to you would need to know the shape of the track and. Um, and it would be a very complicated little problem. You, you could do it, but it would be hard work. If you think of conservation of energy, all of a sudden you go, Hey, it's simple. The roller coaster starts at the top. It doesn't have uh, any kinetic energy, but it has some gravitational potential energy. Yeah. So then it, then it rolls down and at, at, the bottom, at the bottom of the truck it has the same energy. Now, however, it is all kinetic energy, so I know its speed. It's simple. We are done. Whoa! 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 I worship you. I worship the scientist. <laughs> Such a beauty. Such a robust, such a universal <laughs> I feel like I'm mentally crying right now. I feel happiness. I feel like a deep, deep. What? How can I describe myself right now? It's like a deep. Ah, uh, peace. Yeah, it's peace. I'm so peaceful. I okay. Let me keep, keep going, keep digging. When I think about Newton's law, I'm thinking about individual objects and the thinking about the forces on them. When I think about momentum and even more, so when I 
when, when I think about energy, I'm stepping back and taking a more holistic view of the situation. I'm trying to stop worrying about all of the microscopic details and look at the big picture. Energy is lovely because there is just one number, just one number. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that, that one number is just, and that, and one, that one number is just shifting around from place to place. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So energy is lovely because there is just one number. And that one number is just, in, just shifting around from place to place. From object to object. And form from, from, from form to form. Wow. But it's always there, and it's just shifting around, and it provides me with a lovely tool to think about arbitrary complex systems. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh.